truly. And it does look like our special guest for today's live stream is here. Good friend of the show, Renee Johnston. Um, do you want to do a little bit of an intro, Zach, for our guest and the story we're going to be talking about today? Yeah, absolutely. So I hit up Renee yesterday because she had uh, one of the first tweets I'd seen uh, about the Tyree Nichols murder uh, that was that interested me. It was we uh, just gotten done with our live stream on Friday and I saw that there was a picture of a white guy holding a taser. Right. And I just had a really long conversation with my sister uh, about how, you know, like obviously like, you know, they were throwing the book at the black cops because they wanted to make an example of it of them because the police forces in every city across America is a white supremacist brotherhood and they're going to throw, uh, you know, they're going to scapegoat these black men because they don't care about them and they never saw them as fraternity even though they were you know executing the same you know orders and power structures as the rest of them and that okay those cops were you know responsible for their own actions and acab and all of that shit um but clearly the fact that uh the response had come in such a way uh where they were preparing for riots and all that kind of stuff like everybody wanted to vilify these cops in fact another thing that had initially brought my attention to this story when i first heard about it was before uh the uh, the build up to the one, the, the video drop, it was uh, causing a lot of people to have good discussions on Twitter. Joe Biden called the mayor of Kansas City and was like warning him about like aggressive uh, anti-police activity and whatnot. Um, so I just thought this was a very strange story. And I, I wanted to reach out to Renee because I thought she'd done a great job of kind of uh, questioning the main narrative and, and also, uh, you know, um, just addressing this in a forceful way. Uh, and we always have such great conversations. So it's super excited to get her back in here. Absolutely. Without further ado, welcome back to the Vanguard. Renee, how you doing today? Good. Hey, Zach. Hey, Gavin. How you guys uh, doing? Doing, doing, doing all right. Doing all right. Um, I, I mentioned in, in our intro that you were the first person that I'd seen that kind of uh, drew attention to the fact that there was uh, very obviously on mainstream news, a, a photo or a video still of a, of a white guy holding a taser, aiming it at Tyree Nichols, clearly intent to do some damage, right? Not, n not an innocuous pose with it, but he had received absolutely no attention, right? It was, it was described as the all black scorpion unit, right? And they immediately put the like mug shots of all the five black officers up like they like like the media always does whenever there's any black criminals right you immediately what is the first thing that you see is a row of mug shots to make them look as criminal and as guilty as possible and look i'm not a guy that's ever going to simp for the police i don't fucking care if they throw the book at these guys but i would at least like to have seen them throw the book at everybody equally which of course they would have never done um could you talk about how you came across this and uh what what initially drew you uh to to keep an eye on this outside of the fact that it was you know one of the countless devastating acts of police brutality we witness to every year so when the initial reports were coming out and they had arrested already and everybody was fired and they were already pursuing charges and i was like wow that was really fast <laughs> like we're getting videos in you know days and um, it just seemed to me to be very odd that there was such a quick response to what was happening. And I obviously, listen, I, my firm belief on policing is that all police suck, right? Like there is an issue in this country with the way the system is built for policing that allows police officers, whether they're black, they're brown, they're whatever, to treat other people as if their humanity does not exist. So I wasn't so much like, oh, man, like, I can't believe these black cops did this. That doesn't shot their cops. Right. So that part doesn't surprise me. What surprised me was the swiftness which with there was a response to what happened. Right. Because meanwhile, there's no answer on Kenan Anderson. Right. Like there's nothing happening there. Like three people were killed within like a day and a half in L.A. And none of that has gotten a response that this is. Not and and you know then they started with these press releases and they're like oh this has to be how everybody responds from now on and I was like mm, I feel like that's not really what's gonna happen so funny enough as you all know I talk to my mother often and my mother was like I need you to watch this interview on ABC with the parents and the attorney and tell me if I heard what I thought I heard so I watched the interview and I'm like people were saying there was a white person and what is going on so. I actually initially went into this with no intentions of watching the video. Um, I have police violence in my family history. I did not want to see it. I didn't want any part of it. But after I heard that, I felt like I had some responsibility to at least figure out if that was true because I didn't, I don't like to write anything unless I can confirm like in some way for myself that what I'm putting out there is, is true. So 
I start watching different videos and then I watch Joy Joy read her feed and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. That doesn't look like a black person driving this car. And then the light, the headlight goes out when he opens the car door and I'm like, that is definitely not a black person driving that car. And then he approaches and it's so clear to me that this is a white person. And I'm like, well, that's real quirky that no one's talking about the white person that was at the initial scene, the white person with the taser, the white person that, you know, for all we know is the reason that he freaked out and decided to run. Like we don't, we're not, we're not discussing this at all. Like it's not part of the conversation. And so I put that tweet out there because I'm a crazy person. And <laughs> I was like, I am going to watch this video in slow motion on pause until I can find a screenshot that I can use that makes it very clear that these are white hands holding this thing and chasing this man down the street. And, you know, what bothered me were people were like, oh, those are the street lights. And I'm like, can we, <laughs> like, can we I saw it too. It, and it was clear as day. I, I mean, Gavin put it up on screen just a second ago, but it made me stop in my tracks because I had just, like, we just finished recording. Right. And I was talking about how like, okay, this is still a white supremacist system of violence. That's going to like undermine everyone. And that's why, you know, these cops are still cops. And even though they can be uh, unfairly <laughs> prosecuted uh, because they are black men in America, that they're still also you know, guilty and we have to like have that balance. But then I see this. And I'm like, oh, that's a white dude's hands right there. That's there's no way about it. That's a ham fist from, uh, you know, a, a white guy. And you're like, wait, this they're covering for the white guy. And in at first I was like, I had to just like kind of like I was like, am I seeing this right? Like, read more, read more. I'm like, this is exactly what they're doing. They are literally firing everybody else, washing their hands of everybody else putting him on trial and then just moving this guy to a fucking desk, even though he was clearly just as involved as these other officers. I mean, the, the transparency of the criminal behavior and also the gang behavior, right? Like, honestly, like how, I mean, I, I know people throw around the like white supremacist brotherhood comparison to the police, but the fact that they just explicitly did this without thinking, without any conversation, it really lends credence to the fact that they are only out there to protect white cops. And in juxtaposition, you've talked about how many countless uh, other instances where it didn't get this media attention. Uh, I remember just two days ago, I saw a video of an off-duty cop that was drunk as fuck, and he starts shooting at a teenage driver. He gets acquitted of everything, right? And then you just compare that to how they're treating the, the Scorpion unit, which... Once you read into that, it's like, oh, you designed this unit to be all black cops so that you could ask them to be extra violent and like try and keep the media off their back. So it's just like this was designed by the entire police state that's now punishing them for executing its orders, which they shouldn't have done. Obviously, I'm not simping for them, but you start to see how all of this shit is connected. Right. It's really mind boggling. And there's there's so many bits and pieces to this story that there, there's just not enough conversation about, in my opinion, like there's not a whole lot of people talking about the fact that the chief of police in Memphis comes from Atlanta, <laughs> right? That she, yes, <laughs> she I comes didn't know from that Atlanta and she started similar, you know, these special task force squads when she was in Atlanta, she actually lost her job temporarily because she was hiding criminal activity while she was there. like, all these little pieces that come into play and this is what they do, right? Like these, these police, these law enforcement people, they move around from area to area to area. They do this and all they do is take the bad behavior from one place to another and no one ever addresses the issues. Everybody should be held responsible. This young man at 150 pounds and six foot three, because he had Crohn's to, I can't even imagine the feeling that he had when he realized I'm so close to home. Maybe I, like I can envision it, right? That in his head, he was like, if I can just get home, if I can just get home, I might be safe, right? So he took off because his goal was to not die a few blocks from his house. His goal was to try to get home so he could get some sort of protection because he knew what this was gonna turn into. 
the the idea you know, I get so many people who are like, oh, he shouldn't have run and he didn't comply and all these things. Nobody wants to die, right? Like all said and done, it is very, very basic. We are all human beings. We all live, we all breathe, we all eat, we all bleed. Everybody just wants to live. And that poor boy saw that he could try and get home and that's what he tried to do. And I don't know that people understand, he was like four or five houses down from his front door when they did this, right? He was almost home when they caught up with him. And the idea that the EMTs, everyone else who appeared, like all these people came and y'all all watched this man die and nobody cared. No, nobody thought like, let's do something so that he doesn't die like five houses away from his front door. And then they lied. The police reports were full of lies. The press release was a lie. When they knocked on his mother's door, they told her a lie. Like it was just one lie after another, after another. And in the end, like he didn't even do anything wrong. They can't even no. prove that he was driving recklessly. So what, like, what is all of this for? Like, I, I can't understand how we, how we're still, I'm 46. I was six years old when my, when my uncle was killed. It's been 40 years and we're literally still having the same conversations. Yeah. I don't even understand how that's, how that's like reality and how people don't understand how terrifying this is. That was the other thing I wanted to add was, you know, people can say all they want. Why did this guy run? Why? How could I mean, how could you just not run? Right. If you look at just days before this happened or I mean, you know, the timelines are messy because there are so many police killings in this country. But if you remember in Los Angeles, Patrice Coolers, uh, you know, uh, he, he had a, he was so afraid of the cops just the moment he had to start interacting with them. He was apologizing to them. Oh, I didn't mean to do this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, but he just got in a fucking car accident. You know how many people get in car accidents? Like oh, there's thousands of them every year. Does that, is that a death sentence in this country? He's horrified because he has to deal with the police, which should reveal to everybody just how absolutely endemic and horrible this problem is in every single place you go in this country and you have to deal with the police. Um, and, and then you see, okay, he knew also that this was immediately going to turn lethal if one thing went wrong, if this cop decided one thing. And, and and then it happens again, and it happens again, and it happens again. And people are like, oh, well, why did you try and get away from that? Why did you, why didn't you just like you stand there and be executed? It's like the same thing. It's like, why was he resisting arrest? You mean when he was fighting for his life so he didn't die a like a beating? Uh, as he's rolling over on his side to try and breathe. Right. That's and, and like now? in what world if you if you're if you know you're not driving erratically, right? And you start to get pulled over, you're automatically nerd. Like I'm like 10 and two driving and I see a cop and I worry that they're gonna pull out behind me. I'm a white right? guy and I constantly like, rear view mirror drive. Right, so they didn't even give, it's not like they approached the vehicle and they were like, you know, drivers like they pull, like they approached the video with malice. Right, they approached the window with malice. If you watch the video, like uh, immediate, like the cursing to get out of the car, they physically pull him out of the car. That man was afraid, and he clearly had a reason to be afraid because look at how it ended, right? So for all these people who are like, "Oh, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have, he shouldn't have," well, obviously he was right in his fear. Because this, the exact thing that he was trying to avoid happening when he took off is exactly what happened. And it's not because he took off. It's not because he ran. It's not because he was driving recklessly. It is because these people don't give a shit about the humanity of other people. All they care about is that you do everything that they say that you should do the minute they tell you to do it while they're telling you two different things. Right. Stay still. Turn over. Lay down. Get on your stomach. Like all these different things. They've got the, the taser pointed against him. The man was terrified. I would run too. like anybody's going to run in a situation where they feel like their life is in danger. That's literally what your body is meant to do. Your body literally goes into flight or fright mode. <laughs> like literally. 
So right. the idea that like it's crazy that he ran, I don't even understand why people even ask that question. And when they have this consistent, there's always this consistent, you know, they only worry about it when it's a black person who dies, right? It's his fault then. And no one ever really stops to think about all the different white people who kill people, who have guns, who have knives, who cuss the police out. Who d- They're all fine. So obviously it's, it's possible, right? There is, a, there is a time and place where you can do something when you are faced with a police officer and you can walk away from that situation without harm. Somebody sent me a story about, I think she was in Oklahoma. She was in a backseat handcuff, got out of her handcuffs, got the AR-15 or whatever it was from, from the police car, shot two officers, right? She was high on meth. They did a whole standoff for three hours and she got arrested, right? Yep. So there are obviously situations in which you are able to deal with the police and you don't have to lose your life if they choose that your humanity is worth saving. Right. But that's just and, not the situation. Right. And to further underscore just the terrifying nature of this specific police encounter and of many police encounters, I mean, it's already scary enough dealing with a single cop. Um, this guy was beat to death by five police officers. And now apparently there was a sixth one, too, at the scene tasering him. I mean, if, if, if you don't need a further illustration of why we need to defund the police, why the fuck were six Memphis police officers dispense to deal with someone who wasn't even a threat in the first place right has there been any sort of explanation of this yes there's a seventh now just so you know there's a seventh officer who has not been identified (laughs) right who's also involved in this in some way and people don't know this this guy what a hiltman or whatever whatever his name is i can't i just remember it's a hill something he was suspended the day after the incident occurred So this all happened on the 8th. On the 9th, he was suspended. Think about when they started posting pictures of who did this. He was already suspended. So how is he not part of the storyline? How was he missed? Like, how, how did that happen that we didn't discuss at all the dude with the taser? Yeah, and he was sitting in like they, 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 like I think he's still like everybody else had been fired, but at first he was just put on on leave. He was still collecting a paycheck. He was still like able to secure a pension. I think that might have changed due to the public backlash because they got found out that they were trying to cover for this guy. Um, but now there's a seventh uh, guy. Um, I don't. It just it it, it, it it's absolutely insane. It, it, it's insane, and and it, the way that it's been spun by the media to be like oh, see, the left doesn't care about it as long as they can't make it like a race thing, right? And it's like, it completely just, the entire conversation just gets shot to hell. Like, it's so hard to even move the goalposts back to where we can have an effective conversation about why this all needs to change. You know what I mean? Right. And it's really not, I want people to understand, this is not, I'm not like, oh, we got to, it's about the white person. It's of about not. all of them, right? Yeah. It's about all of them. The problem is if you don't step back and understand how complicit the media is with police, right? And how the police all work together to make the decision on who's going to get punished, who's going to get put out there to be seen, who's going to be the face of the problem, right? They're all working together to keep everybody under this impression that the news tells you the truth about what happens in these situations. And people need to understand that that is not the case. These press releases are all nonsense. I, let me not say all, I don't want to be hyper, you know, like over. The cops lie a lot more stuff. than they tell the truth. But a though. lot of them, like these stories come out and almost every time when you go back, the police report has nothing and the press release have nothing to do with the truth, right? We're still wait. I'm still waiting to understand how somebody got shot living in a tree in Atlanta trying to stop somebody, you know, and they'll tell you, oh, we're still investigating. How are you investigating yourself? Oh, yeah. And I think even the press release that they shot first, you have video, but you're not you're not presenting that. And I don't know any world in which if you have proof of something, you don't show it. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and for people who, you know, remain skeptical of the, the, the way that the cops just blatantly lie, I mean, I, I feel like every single one of you could think back into your own life and when's an experience when the cops just obviously didn't tell the truth, right? Like everybody remembers the George Floyd protests, right? If you're in, audi in, if you're in our audience, I, I expect that you were involved in that in some kind of a capacity, okay? And I remember like there would be a bunch of like young kids there that were angry and pissed off, rightfully so, and they would throw like water bottles at these police that are basically in like fucking bionicle suits. It's like fucking looking like cast members from the Halo video game, just like fucking out there with the fucking pictures, like a water, a plastic water bottle that some kid threw at you isn't doing damage. But then they would start firing fucking gas into the fucking uh, protesters and they would be like, they would be like, there were projectiles being thrown at the police. And it's like, oh, that's a real funny way to put an empty water bottle, a projectile. Like that's what, that's the kind of shit that they'll do. Even when they're technically telling the truth, it's all spun to make it sound like you're an insane criminal and they're a victim. Yep. It's all and and that's what the whole the whole game is. The whole game is to keep people listening to the nonsense and believing that these stories are true and and feeding this this lie that like black people are so dangerous and black men are so dangerous and the police are there to protect you. But you can't even call the police when you actually need help because they're gonna come in there with guns drawn, right? If you look at Kamar Smith in LA, she, his wife begged them, like, I just need you to come help. Please don't do anything to hurt him. I just need you to come help. And they shot that man to death in the kitchen for a mental health episode. And this is what happens. Like you call the police and they come and the majority of the time they either miss the problem so they can't save you from whatever it was that you were calling them for. Or they get there and they make it worse because they don't know how to handle these situations. I don't know when we're going to start acknowledging that police do not serve the purpose that they purport to serve. They simply do not. So we have to get to a place where we stop selling this story about police being there to protect, to serve, to help, to, to do all these things. Because that only happens in neighborhoods that have all the other resources. So until you live in a place where all the resources are available so that you don't have to criminalize people in order to keep everything else going, in order to keep the prisons going, in order to keep the courts going, in order to keep slavery going so they can do all the work for a reduced price, until you start fixing those problems and acknowledging that police don't help to solve any of that stuff, we're never getting anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, sometimes even people in our audience, not all the time, but sometimes we'll hear people saying, well, the slogan defund the police still isn't popular enough for us to use it. Um, we got to soften our rhetoric. And with these recent instances of police brutality, it's seemingly the last month, there's just been you know, countless, um, so much so that we've already, like you kind of referenced, moved on from the police murder of Tortuguita in Atlanta due to the intensity surrounding the protest movement for uh, Tyra Nichols justice. Um, it's like, at what point, like, we have to be honest about what the solution is. It is to defund the police. That, at this point, is the compromise, in my opinion. Um, so I have no room, I have no time left for anyone that wants to tone police, the activists, uh, the people like us who are, you know, saying this is the clear solution. You know, the Memphis police officer did not need a dispatch with seven pigs to murder this man's murder. This man, um, this is completely unacceptable. We need some sort of change. Uh, it's just, it's just very frustrating. Yeah, that it is. And I guess a, a a good way to round this out, Renee, would just be to ask you what what would you like to see come come after this? You know, it, it's so interesting because the. They've, the establishment has made such a point to throw the book at these specific five officers that they've targeted as the sole responsible parties for this. You know, oh, the bad apple thing where oh they disbanded the Scorpion unit where they basically demanded that these guys go out and brutalize uh, the community that they were supposedly supposed to protect and serve. Uh, what, what would you like to see happen now? How would you like to see the court systems navigate this? And, and what would be uh, the closest thing we can get to justice for you moving forward? In this specific case? Just, yeah, specifically looking at, at the Tyree Nichols case, just because of how many layers there are, how much information we still don't have, and how much obvious corruption and protection of the white 
uh, force over uh, the black officers. I mean, it, it's just clear as day that they treated them so much differently, which it, it, it you know, which doesn't undermine the argument that uh, everybody on the left has made. It actually further makes it that this is an absolute racist organization and it needs to be dismantled completely and rethought out. Because as you mentioned uh, as well, uh, there was the uh, poor gentleman, I can't remember his name, uh, but his uh, fiance or wife called the police to have him help with his uh, his uh, mental health episode. And, and, and they came and uh, shot him as well. We need to have actual trained response for people to de-escalate those situations. That man deserved treatment and he would still be here. That man deserved de-escalation. Instead, they shot him. I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, you know, you can't even find words for that. It's so obvious that the system needs to be dismantled and re-envisioned completely. Um, but within the narrow parameters of justice that we could somehow hope to have in the near future, I'm just curious what that all looks like to you and where you'd like to see the left's attention devoted. So, one one thing is they made this big announcement they were going to pull apart the Scorpion Squad, blah, blah, blah. So if you listen to the organizers in Memphis, there's still two task force left, <laughs> right, that were under the same umbrella that have not been disbanded. So that's great that you took apart the one, but all they probably did was disperse, disperse those that whoever was left in that group, because I believe it was 40 officers amongst four teams of 10. All they did was disperse that group into the other two, probably, right? Because they're all under the same umbrella. So what I'd like to see is that these specialized groups go away, right? New York City is about to restart another like specialized group to work with like community issues, whatever. It's going to be as bad as the broken windows. We're going to go back to the millions of, of false arrests and pulling people over and treating people like crap because they're making assumptions about people in the community, right? All of these specialized groups need to end because they don't help. They're all built and put in place to brutalize the community. That is the whole purpose because they don't stop crime. Right. There is no correlation. I watched on Democracy Now! today. There's a gentleman who was talking about this about this situation. And he said in all his research, there is no correlation between these groups and actually stopping crime in any area. It just it doesn't work. So that has to stop. Regarding this specific situation, I'd like to see all the cops who were involved be named, be put be public and that they all get treated as if they allowed a man to die, right? Like for all of the conversation about like, oh, well, you know, he, he may have shot the taser, but he wasn't there when, when they actually beat. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care that he wasn't there because there are plenty of people sitting in jail right now because they were in a car when somebody else shot somebody, right? They do it all the time. They are perfectly willing to criminalize people for being in the vicinity of any kind of criminal act. So if you were a part of this, if you started at the traffic stop, which should not have been a traffic stop, which I'm still trying to get confirmation that they even called it in to say we are pulling this gentleman over, which to my knowledge so far did not happen, you are part of the problem. You helped create a situation in which a young man decided he was going to try and run to his parents and ended up getting beat to death. And if you showed up afterwards and you walked around with these callous ass officers laughing and talking about how hard it was to beat this man up and watching him trying to catch his breath, you're an EMT and you show up at the scene and you see somebody clearly who needs medical attention and you leave him sitting on the floor. Like we can't, if they are not going to make an effort to, to at least at the, if you're going to do anything at the least, make sure that people have to answer to the loss of life of someone else. And I don't believe in a death penalty. So even for these people, I'm not suggesting that because it's not going to bring this young man back. His parents have lost him. Nothing's going to change that. But the only thing that can change at this point is that there could be some true transparency and honesty about what happened, how it happened, and who was there and allowed it to happen. That is the least that they can do is be honest and transparent about it. 
Yeah, I think that's that's very well said, uh, Renee. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us and talk about this. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on, uh, you know, regardless of the the topic. But uh, you know, I really appreciate you keeping uh, such close an eye on this because it, it was honestly it was something that I would have missed just in the the uh, everything, which is terrible to say because it's something that needs all of our attention. But between the there's so much, uh, you know, I think four names immediately jump to my mind if I think about the recent assault that the police are constantly doing. And I know that there's so many more, you know, 100 every month. And we know the names of four of these uh, individuals, you know, that's 96 other people who just had as rich, robust lives that were gone, taken from the world, taken from their parents by the police. So, uh, yeah, it's something that we all have to always be thinking about because, uh uh, the police aren't going to stop until we make them. But thank you so much, Renee. You're yeah, welcome. I really Thanks appreciate for it. having me on. Appreciate Thanks so much, it. Renee. You have and a good one. By the way, before you head out, uh, make sure to let everyone in our audience know where to follow you on Twitter as well as Substack. You do so much great work. So please let everyone know where to follow you. That's that's the Twitter feed right there, the R Johnson 815. Um, <laughs> people get really mad at me on Twitter. So just... <laughs> Be warned. Oh, oh it's okay. We're, we're no strangers <laughs> to controversy here at the Vanguard either. So uh, we love your Twitter for what it's worth. And um, I, I don't actually, I think my Substack is also Renee, Renee C. Johnston. I think um, I'll, I should probably put it in my Twitter feed somewhere. I'm actually writing right now about this situation. You know, I'm, I'm a, a mom and I have a 12 year old son and I can't get through these stories without like literally like just looking at him and thinking I like I can't even wrap my head around it and I don't know if people understand how scary it is right as a mom to know that like this could be something that you have to handle later I don't think people really comprehend it yeah I I, I as somebody who's not a parent I I, I, I certainly I, I, I can't only imagine you know all right you yeah. all have a good one thank you again you too. Uh, thank, thank you so, so much Renee all right. Bye. Yeah. Great conversation with Renee. Always enjoy chatting with her.